Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about sampling distribution of the difference between two means x1 bar minus x2 bar. So in last lecture we talked about central limit theorem and we saw some examples involving single sample. Okay, so just for the sake of completeness, what does the central limit theorem says? It says that if x is a nor if x is a random variable which has some mean mu and variance, finite variance sigma square, then consider the statistic x bar. There is a sample mean. Then this x bar follows normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square by n, and you take n to be at least 30. Okay, and as your n will keep on increasing, this follows normal distribution. It follows more nicer and nicer normal distribution and once you have a random variable that follows normal distribution you can always convert it into a standard normal distribution by subtracting from the mean and dividing by the standard deviation and this is my z and as n goes to infinity as your n increases this is approximately standard normally distributed so this is what the center limit theorem says and we have seen examples involving single sample now what if you have two samples okay so you have suppose population 1 and population 2 you have two populations say x1 and x2 there is another way of writing x1 is one random variable x2 is another random variable and you take a sample of size n1 from x1 and you take a sample of size n2 from x2 and then you find the sample mean for the first population which you denote by x1 bar and you find the sample mean for second population which you call as an x2 bar. Now once you have two sample mean, now one can define many operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication and so on. But we mainly play with the subtraction operation x1 bar minus x2 bar. Because difference tell you a lot of information, right? Suppose if you're in a company and if you want to see what is uh, like if you want to see quarter on quarter performance or year on year performance or half yearly performance. So, so if you have suppose if you want to see quarter on quarter performance, suppose if you are in an automobile company or any company which is making some product and if you have an average mean of some sample of last quarter, an average mean of sample of this quarter, then obviously when you take the subtraction, you will come to know whether you have done profit or loss, even like for the sales also. So whenever you want to compare the things, difference is the best way to do it. That's why in books when you study, practically people always talk about x1 bar minus x2 bar. In literature, there is a theory involving addition and all those things, but we will restrict ourselves to subtraction. Okay, so question is now, is this, what is the distribution for this random variable? Okay, now see, we will take n1 and n2 to be size at least 30, so that we can apply central limit theorem. Okay, so for safer side, we will always take n1 and n2 to be greater or equal 30. So x1 is some random variable with mu and which say suppose its mean is mu1 and variance is sigma1 square and for x2 the mean is mu2 and the variance is sigma2 square. Okay now what about x1 bar? Now by central limit theorem we know that x1 bar follows normal distribution with mean mu1 and variance sigma1 square by n1 and x2 bar follows normal distribution with mean mu2 and variance sigma2 square by n2. Thanks to central limit theorem we have these two things. Okay, moreover, these two are x1 and x2. I mean, this n, the sample that we are taking, the sample is also independent. Okay, so we are having independent samples and uh, they are normally distributed. x1 bar and x2 bar are normally distributed. Now, what can you say about x1 bar minus x2 bar? Well, there is a very nice result. If you have, say, n number of independent normally distributed random variables, and if you take its linear combination, a1, x1, plus a2, x2, plus a3, x3, and so on, then the linear combination of independent normally distributed random variables is again normally distributed. So if I take its combination, say a1 x1 plus a2 x2 right so if i take 1 and minus 1 so if i take x so this is a linear combination of x1 bar and x2 bar so because of that result x1 bar minus x2 bar is also normally distributed the question is what is the mean and what is the variance well that is easy to find so what is mean or what is you can say you, either you can write mu or you can write e so what is e of x1 bar minus x2 bar so we know that e is a nice uh, it's a linear right is e is linear in nature expectation is linear in nature so this is e of x1 bar what is expectation of x1 bar it is mu1 and what is expectation of x2 bar mu2 so x1 bar minus x2 bar follows normal distribution with mean mu1 minus mu2 
and what can you say about its variance well if you want to talk about the variance we are going to use the property of a variance and which property we are going to use the property that we are going to use is what is variance of ax plus by well we have seen in our earlier lecture on properties of variance if x and y are independent random variables then it is nothing but a square variance of x plus b square variance of y in general it is 2ab covariance of xy but x and y are independent so covariance is zero so here also my x1 bar and x2 bar are independent so their covariance is zero so what is variance so what is variance of x1 bar minus x2 bar my a1 is 1 a is 1 and b is minus 1 so this is like this only it is variance of x1 plus variance of x1 bar and x2 bar but what is variance of x1 sigma 1 square upon n1 and what is this variance x2 sigma 2 square upon n2 so the variance is sigma 1 square upon n1 plus sigma 2 square upon n2 so what is the conclusion the conclusion is if you have two populations and if you take two statistics random independent x1 bar and x2 bar then they are normally distributed their subtraction is normally distributed with mean mu1 minus mu2 and the variance is sigma1 square upon n1 plus sigma2 square upon n2 and we always take n1 n2 to be at least 30 so that we can easily apply central limit theorem okay and once we have a random variable that, that is normally distributed, you can always convert it into a standard normal variable. So how can you convert a normal variable into standard normal variable? With the help of a transformation. What is the transformation? If x is a normally distributed, then x minus mu upon sigma. If you use that transformation, you get the z variable. So here my x is x1 bar minus x2 bar minus the mean, which is mu1 minus mu2 divided by standard deviation which is square root of this sigma 1 square upon n1 plus sigma 2 square upon n2 and this is a formula that you will usually see in the book so whenever there is a two population thing is there in the question find the difference between the means find the standard deviation use this transformation go into the z world once you are in the world of z use the z distribution to solve the problem so let's take a couple of examples for better understanding. So here is the first question for you. So now here are two manufacturers, manufacturer A and manufacturer B. Now they are uh, making what? They are making the television picture tubes and the mean lifetime of, is of 6.5 years and the standard deviation is 0 0.9 years for manufacturer A. Whereas for manufacturer B, mean lifetime is 6 years and the standard deviation is 0 0.8 year. What is the probability that a random sample of 36 tubes from manufacturer A will have a mean time that is at least so greater or equal one year more than the mean lifetime of the sample of 49 tubes from manufacturer B. If I call x1 bar and x2 bar for manufacturer A and manufacturer B, you want to find probability that x1 bar is at least means greater or equal 1 plus x2 bar. Now here you can see that the mean of x1 bar is 6.5, mean of x2 bar is 6 years thanks to central limit theorem. Okay, so now let's write down the details and let's try to solve this problem. So in this example, mean is going to be mean for the first population or company A is 6.5, standard deviation 0 0.9, sample size is 36. For the B company, mean is 6, standard deviation is 0 0.8, and the sample size is 49. Okay, and what you want to find, you want to find the probability that x1 bar is at least 1 plus x2 bar, right? This is what the question is. But this is same as saying x1 bar minus x2 bar is greater or equal 1. So x1 bar minus x2 bar is there. So I will convert this into the world of z. Now to convert that, I should know the mean and the variance. So what is mean of x1 bar minus x2 bar? Mean of x1 bar minus x2 bar. It is mean of x1 bar minus mean of x2 bar, which is 6.5 minus 6, which is 0 0.5. What is the standard deviation or x1 bar minus x2 bar? It is square root of sigma 1 square upon n1 plus sigma 2 square upon n2. The answer comes out to be 0 0.189. And now you know that z, if you take z to be 
एक्स वन बार मैनस एक्स टू बार इज एटलीस्ट वन सो इफ आई टेक वन माइनस द मीन जीरो पॉइंट फाइव अपॉन स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन जीरो पॉइंट वन एट नाइन एंड इफ यू डू द कैलकुलेशन द आंसर कम्स आउट टू बी टू पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव एंड वी हैव सीन इन द थियरली इन अर्लियर लेक्चर्स सो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ फाइंडिंग दिस इज सेम है सो रिप्लेस दिस बाई योर जेड जेड ग्रेटर इक्वल टू पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव But if you want to use the z distribution table, the table is always given for the area towards the left. So one minus probability of z less equal to point six five. So the first homework for you is you have to tell me what is the answer for the first question. So I hope this is clear. Let's go for the second example. Now here is the second question. So here the distribution of heights of a certain breed of terrier has a mean of seventy two centimeter and standard deviation ten centimeter. Whereas for another breed, which is the breed of poodle, has the mean 28 and standard deviation 5. So you can see you have two populations over here. Now assume, assuming that the sample means can be measured to any degree of accuracy, you have to find the probability that the sample mean for the random sample of heights of 64 terrier exceeds x1 bar exceeds by that of x2 bar by at most 42 bar, 42.2. So x1 bar exceeds by at most 42. So x1 bar is less equal x2 plus 42. Okay, so it is nothing but x1 bar minus x2 bar at most 42.2. Okay, so that's what you are supposed to find. Now let us try to see this problem in detail. So here is the second question. So here the mean for the first breed, terrier breed, is given to be 72. Standard deviation and the sample size is 64. And the data for the second breed, which is nothing but poodle, the certain breed of poodle, for that the mean is this standard deviation and the sample size. The question is, you have to find the probability that x1 bar will exceed at most to the x2 bar by 44.2. This is what the question is. But again, the same thing. This is nothing but probability of x1 bar minus x2 bar is less equal 44.2. Now again, you have the subtraction. So you, what is your z? You take 44.2. Minus the mean. What is the mean? This minus this, which is nothing but 44, divided by the standard deviation, square root of sigma 1 square upon n1 plus sigma 2 square upon n2. You solve this, you get some number. So finding probability of this is same as finding probability of this is same as finding probability of z less equal whatever this number comes over here. And now you can use a z table to find the answer. So, if you have some time, do not forget to commit the answer for the second question. And here is the last question. So, a random sample of size 25 is taken from a normal population having mean of 80 and a standard deviation 5. A second random sample of size 36 is taken from a different normal population having mean 75 and standard deviation 3. So, mean and standard deviation for both the population as well as the sample size for both the population is given to us. Find the probability that the sample mean computed will exceed the sample mean from another by at least 34, 3.4 and less than 5.9. So x1 bar minus x2 bar is at least means greater equal 3.4 and less than 5.9. So let us try to see the solution of this problem. What is the question? Now we have to find the difference between the sample means will be at least 3.4. But it will be less than 5.9. Now, how will you solve this problem? Again, the same thing. You have x1 bar minus x2 bar. You need to find the z value. So, first thing is you find the mean of this mean of x1 minus mean of x2. Okay. So, what is mean of x1 bar minus x2 bar? It is mean of x1 bar minus mean of x2 bar, which is nothing but 80 minus 75, which is nothing but it comes out to be 5. Second thing is you find the standard deviation square root of sigma 1 square upon n1 plus sigma 2 square upon n2. Great. So, you have this. Now you want to use the z. You will find the z values, right? So you need to find the lower bound for z and the upper bound for z. So z will be what? X1 for this part. X1 bar minus x2 bar. You will take 3.4. But wait, you will not take this as 3.4 because if you see the last line, what does the last line says? Assume that the difference of the mean is measured to the nearest tenth. Okay. So if you have 3.14, this digit after the decimal is called as the nearest tenth. Okay, that's the tenth place. So this is measured to the nearest tenth. That means they are rounding off to the nearest tenth. They are rounding off. So what you take this as? You take this as three point 
3 5 because only when you will have 5 over here then only it will become 4 so it can be 3.35 or 3.36 or 3.37 3.38 3.39 or 4 but the safest is 3.35 because if you take 3.34 you will not get 3.4 so this is the best possible value you can take so to find the lower bound for z you will take 3.35 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and for the upper part z2 5.9 so you will take 5.85 then you will have a 9 over here minus the mean which is 5 upon the sigma so finding probability of this is same as finding the probability this number less equal z less equal this number and now i think by looking at the earlier lectures you are now an expert on how to solve the probability involving z values so the third homework for you is you have to comment the answer for the third question so yeah i think this many examples are sufficient if you have any other doubt or any other example which is not clear do ask me in the comment section i will be more than happy to help you Thank you.